Hey everyone, this is Josiah from Grace Note Forge. So in a previous video, I carved this leaf pendant out of some hard green jewelry carving wax. And rather than just use this model to directly cast, I wanted to try making a silicone mold so I can make some wax copies just in case the casting process doesn't go well the first time. And to make my mold, I'm going to try using this Freeman Clear RTV silicone rubber that I picked up from a local jewelry supplier. This is my first time using this silicone, but I've seen others have some really good results with it. Just in case you want to try it for yourself, I'll leave an affiliate link down in the description of where you can find this silicone. I'm going to orient the model in my mold frame just to get an idea of how the sprues are going to be set up. And my plan is to inject wax into the mold through this hoop in these thin areas to create the sprues needed for casting. Now this really is more of an experiment to correct some problems that I've had in the past with RTV molds. And typically in thin areas that reach out like this, I've had problems with air bubbles getting trapped in the wax and not being able to get a good consistent wax model. And with a wax injection machine where you can easily dial in the temperature and pressure, this probably wouldn't be an issue. But these are what I normally use for wax injectors. Now I've had some success with these in the past, but as you can see, they're a little dated. So I'm going to take a tip from the Vegel guy. He has a great video about using a basting syringe for a wax injector, and I wanted to try this for myself. One of the benefits of these kind of syringes, other than the fact that they're way more affordable than professional wax injection machines, is that they can withstand heat a lot better than plastic syringes. It should also be able to hold heat in it for a longer period of time, so the wax doesn't cool down as fast. And just like it shows in the veg oil guys video, this needle will need to be cut off in order to fit the opening of the mold better. And I'm going to cut off the needle right at the tip near this cone, because it seems to match the mold frame pretty well, and leaving a section in the needle would most likely spread the mold apart when the syringe is pressed against it. Which is a problem that I had with my old syringes not matching up very well. So I'm just going to cut off this needle with a hacksaw and file away any burrs. Now I'm just going to take some of the wax that I used before to start shaping the sprues. And to be honest, I probably went a little overboard with the design of my sprues, but my main concerns were making sure that there were smooth transitions to allow for the wax to easily flow throughout the mold, and to keep the sprues decently thick to help the molten metal reach the thin areas during the casting process. Once the sprues have been shaped to fit the model, it's ready to be attached to the mold frame and the wax leaf can then be melted to the sprues. And with these thin points, I'm just adding enough wax to attach the sprues and not melt the leaf design more than I need to. The other thing that I'm doing with this mold that's also an experiment is to use some copper wire to create an air vent for the air to escape. I've had problems in the past with air bubbles either staying in the wax model or forcing the mold open from the pressure used to inject the wax. Again, I'm sure these problems are due to user error and not using proper equipment, but for now I'm just going to try this technique as a workaround. I don't think the copper wire should need to be melted to the leaf, just as long as there's a little bit of contact. I then sprayed the wax model with a light coating of mold release spray and got things ready to pour the silicone. This silicone comes in two parts and will need to be mixed together with a 10 to 1 ratio by weight. 
I'm aiming for around 84 grams of silicone to fill my mold, so I added 90% of part A to a cup, coming to around 75.6 grams, and then the remaining 10% or 8.4 grams of part B to reach my target weight of 84 grams in total. It's then mixed together for around two minutes, making sure to scrape the walls of the cup. And here's where I ran into a bit of a problem. My vacuum chamber really isn't tall enough for my mold frame. So while trying to degas it to get rid of any small air bubbles, the silicone expanded up, hitting the lid of the vacuum chamber. So I wasn't able to fully degas the silicone but after leaving it to cure for around 24 hours, a lot of the air bubbles seem to have naturally floated to the top of the mold. And once the silicone is fully cured, I can start cutting away the flashing using an X-Acto knife just to clean up the mold. I'm going to start cutting a wavy pattern around the entire mold to act as a key and help align the two halves of the mold later on. Then I'm going to slowly cut through the mold along the edge of the leaf. And this is the reason I really like using clear silicone for mold making. It really makes it easy to see where the model is and where I need to cut. After the mold has been cut open, I'll cut through the areas holding the hoop so that the entire pendant can easily be removed. I'm going to try using some Freeman Flakes Purple Injection Wax. And I went with this brand because I like how flexible the wax is, which should help with removing the wax models from the mold without damaging any thin areas. I'm going to melt the wax with a cheap crock pot set to its lowest setting, and I'm also keeping the syringe inside the crock pot while the wax melts to get the syringe up to temperature. Then, when the wax is up to temperature, I'm going to use some leather welding gloves to protect my hands from the heat and start injecting the wax into the mold. I'm pressing the two halves of the mold together with my left hand and using the acrylic plates from the mold frame to ensure that there's even pressure when holding them together. Then, when the wax is cooled down enough to be removed from the mold, I'm going to bend the top half of the mold to open up the area where I cut the relief for the hoop before pulling the rest of the wax model from the mold. So I'm definitely not an expert, but in my experience at least, molds like this have a little bit of a learning curve to find out the best temperature to inject the wax with, the right pressure to use, where to cut the mold open, and it just takes a little trial and error to see what works best. But with a little bit of practice, I was able to get some really good results. These are now ready for casting, but that will be for a future video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.